International community, I present to you Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, President, CEO, Dr. Charles Steele, Jr. Good evening. I'm Charles Steele, Jr., President, CEO of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm so happy this morning to be here with you conveying our second a message in terms of where do we go from here. That's basically the overall theme. And we're talking about faith, culture, and the common good, which means the, the, the common ground, the, the common sense of us working together, the connectivity of us coming together to bring about help for our people. Our people have to be those of mindset who want to help those who are less fortunate than we are, the poor people, and those who are left out of the systemic aspect of, of our country in regards to discrimination. We have uh, more discrimination now than we had 50 years ago. Look what just happened uh, in the U.S. Supreme Court just this past June, soon will be a year, with the reversal of the 1965 Voter Rights Act. Look what happened just yesterday. I'm talking about yesterday in terms of the U.S. Supreme Court upholding the referendum out of Michigan in terms of the fact that race does not matter in terms of entering, in terms of universities and colleges. In a referendum in 2006, 58% of Michigan voters approved amending the state constitution to ban any consideration of race in public college admissions and public employment. At the Supreme Court, the six justice majority upheld that process. Justice Anthony Kennedy writing, this case is not about how the debate about racial preferences should be resolved. It's about who may resolve it. The court did not rule on the constitutionality of affirmative action, but opponents are still celebrating. Well, we live in a time with a black president, a black attorney general, when to make the kind of claims that people are being discriminated against and being prevented from entering into positions in a university or a job at a hospital or a public employment project simply no longer makes sense. The NAACP says affirmative action is still needed. Segregation and, and racial inequality exist throughout this country. In housing, we see it in employment, we see it in schools. And so that is something that must be addressed. Justice Sonia Sotomayor agreed, saying judges ought not sit back and wish away racial inequality. And she said of the Michigan referendum, democratically approved legislation can still oppress minority groups. Eight states now ban consideration of race in admissions and hiring, and more states are now expected to ban it. At the University of Michigan, since the ban took effect, black enrollment and Latino enrollment have dropped. From Washington, I'm Steve Handelsman for CCTV. Ladies and gentlemen, we must realize that we can't tolerate this type of prejudice, this type of racism, classism within our society today. We must find the, the common good, which is the common ground, to combat all of this. We can't tolerate any iota, any aspect of racism and classism within our society. 
Dr. King not only fought racism, he fought classism. That's the ethnicity and background of all of us. Don't forget where you come from. Even for our own people of color, you must realize you have to check yourself in terms of classism, not to mention racism. They both are bad. So what has taken place uh, less than a year with those two examples that I just set forth to you is something that we can no longer tolerate. We're talking about the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which we're going to celebrate in Birmingham, Alabama at our convention. And by the way, you need to be there. Our national slash international convention will be in Birmingham, Alabama, 50 years later of the 1964 Voter Rights Act. Ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, expeditiously get to the point before I close. We must go back to the streets. Get out of the suites. It's okay to go through the suites, but always remember your freedom, your quality of life, the justice and the equality that you have experienced today in today's society came because we fought back, not violently, not violently. It works. Even in Berlin, Germany, where I just returned a few weeks ago, the people there were saying because of the mindset of Dr. Martin Luther King and SCLC and the civil rights movement is why today they have hope. Faith doesn't even work unless you have hope. You must give folks hope. And the hope that we have today is that we have to go back to the old landmark of the church. Don't forget the church and hold the church accountable in terms of, of embracing the civil rights movement, which I think most churches will. But we always have to work on the issue of coming together and going back to the old traditional way of the bridge that brought us across, and that's margin and demonstration. It's easier to obtain than it is to maintain, to maintain what you have gained. This is the struggle of today. We must grow in the struggle. The civil rights movement is more prevalent now than ever before. i close with this. When Dr. King was in Berlin, Germany, 50 years ago, the people very excitedly and expeditiously kept reminding me of his quote in terms of him addressing the people that at Sophie Lutheran Church in relationship to the Berlin Wall. Dr. King said, and I quote, no man built wall can keep God away from his people. That's even true today. And because of Dr. King and his commitment to the people in Berlin and throughout uh, Europe, not to mention the worldwide aspect of the impact and the influence of Dr. King even today. But because he went to Berlin and he went to East Berlin and he crossed Checkpoint Charlie, he went through custom and he preached and he gave the sermon there at Sophie Lutheran Church and other churches in East Berlin when they tried to deny him because he didn't have his passport because the U.S. Embassy confiscated his passport because they didn't want him to go into East Berlin. But he went into East Berlin and he gave that dynamic sermon that most Americans are not even aware of. Even today, that sermon is alive and well and we must convey it to you again this morning. No man built wall can separate God from his people. He can always reach down and help us, but we must do it first, help ourselves. So as we close, no man built system or country or segregation or divisiveness to any degree can separate God from us. We must go forward and the upward mobility of our people must set this up. You know why? Because the world is waiting on us. Be sure and tune in next week for the weekly commentary from the President's Office of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Have a great day. self-evident that all men are created equal.
This has been an MBTV production. Why? Because we care.